In the hills of New York's Hudson River Valley lies Sleepy Hollow, a town known primarily for a very scary legend. The Dutch came to Sleepy Hollow in the 1600s and started to farm the land. At this old house, you can still see what life was like in the 17th and 18th centuries. You can see farm carts and horses and learn how to cut wood. It's fine. Although it's a fun place to visit, the town is most famous today for the story of a tall, thin teacher and a horseman with no head. Storyteller Jonathan Cruck explains the legend. Now, dwelling in these parts in a tenant house was a certain schoolmaster by the name of Ichabod Crane. American author Washington Irving visited this area as a youth. Later, he wrote the legend of Sleepy Hollow about the people and places in this town. Bill Lent looks after the old Dutch church in Sleepy Hollow. He explains how the story started. Grandpas were the entertainment center around the fireplace in the evening. Bill says the old storytellers created the shocking legend to help keep the kids under control. Bill knows everything about the story and shows tourists where the famous characters are buried. Taken out, smashed up, and when he was writing the book, he remembered the name on the stone, Katrina Van Tassel, lead female character in the legend of Sleepy Hollow. In the story, the teacher, Ichabod Crane, rode his horse toward this bridge by the old Dutch church, racing from the headless horseman. Ichabod urged his horse gunpowder on. Come, come! But the horse needed no further urgings. It took off and headed down to get to that churchyard bridge. At the Horseman restaurant, the locals say they love hearing the legend. So many times I ask myself, it's a real or just a legend? Every year, Sal Tarantino plays the Headless Horseman in the town's Halloween festival. The hardest problem is a real jack-o'-lantern. We've tried that several times. Um, a good-sized jack-o'-lantern with the right candle in it weighs about 20 pounds, and to hold that out on your arm and try to control a horse at 40 miles an hour in the dark doesn't work too well. Irving did not actually write the legend here in Sleepy Hollow, but he was deeply affected by the town and as an adult returned to live here in this large house by the Hudson River. In the house is a complete collection of books written by Irving, including his famous short stories. Today, you can come to visit Irving's house by train. The train came through in... The manager here says that Irving wasn't pleased when the train first arrived because of the pollution and the noise. When the trains came, things began to change immediately. In 1899, the country's first car factory was built in Sleepy Hollow. The factory recently closed down, but the town is still busy. Nearly two centuries after Irving wrote the legend of Sleepy Hollow, people still find this place magical. And the legend lives on even today. If you listen... You'll the storyteller says that if you listen, you may still recognize the sounds of the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow.